Lord to God, my brethren, I want to say peace of the Lord to everyone. I invite the church to stand up at this moment. I'm going to read the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Prophet Habakkuk chapter 3. We're going to read only two verses. Verse 1 and 2. Prophet Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Habakkuk 3. Habakkuk 3, verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. We can read together. It's a book that is hidden. In my Bible, it's page 825 in the Old Testament. Everybody was waiting for the New Testament, uh, Matthew, Luke, Habakkuk. You can put a name on your son of Habakkuk. He will never be forgotten. You remember the message today. Habakkuk, chapter 3. Amen, my brother. Let's read, let's read together the first two verses. Together. O Lord, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on sing, single note. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Amen. The church may be seated. Habakkuk is a complicated name that we just said, but it has a meaning that is very simple. Habakkuk in Hebrew means embrace. When King begin to apply this right away, this name, this wonderful name for us here, which is the way that we feel when we come close to the house of the Lord. Isn't it true? We feel embraced by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord. And at this moment, He is taking care of you who entered here tonight with this glorious embrace. This is a prophetic book. It's called, it's called a minor prophet. Not because Habakkuk was a less important than the other prophets, but just the, in the meaning that he wrote less than the prophets, which are called the major prophets. Major because of the size of their books. So we have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Those are called the Daniel. They are called the major prophets. And the minor prophets are those books that we have such a hard time finding here. You have to go to the index of the Bible to find what they are. Even those Bibles that have uh, the help on the side here, it's difficult because they are very close together. Right? And be hoping that the pastor is not looking. <laughs> I went to make a visitation all of those days and I opened in the Gospels. And I said, let us read, look in the visit. And I was disappointed because it was one of my sheep, is, it is, one of my ship, I'm hoping that he's not watching us online. <laughs> and it was in Genesis, Exodus. Oh my God. We're going to make another visitation. But this book, in spite of being a minor prophet, in the sense that he wrote less, it has only three chapters. He says, it speaks a lot of the moment in which we're living. I'm not going to say a lot, I'm just going to read a verse that says, I'm going to read before. Until when, Lord, will I plea, and you will not hear me? I will shout violence, and you will not save me? For what reason do you see me, make me see iniquity? Because the destruction and violence are before me. 
it looks like we are reading the news there are contemporary and there is more for this cause the law is lacking and sentence never comes out because the um, unfaithful surround the just and the perverted is goes free be admired because I do in our days a work that you are not going to believe when you, it is told to you. So in the midst of this chaos, social, political and economical, and socially speaking, it can even say the families, families suffering these actions of this world, the Lord does an amazing work. And it, incredible work which is the work that comes from God and reaches man in his need a work that comes through the gospel of the Lord Jesus and reveals to man is reveals Jesus as the Savior and shows to man that there is an eternity to be lived so in the midst of the chaos chaos the Lord introduces the paradise he presents eternity with God. He introduces something that we are not used to reading uh, the news and hear and see on the news because this world goes from bad to worse. And the Bible says, men are deceiving and being deceived. So my brethren, this is the book, a prophetic book, this amazing prophetic book of Ab Habakkuk. And it says, through, uh, he says it as a, as a song, so it's the embrace of God and the, in the prophetic song for us. What we who have received Jesus as our Savior, we who have heard this revelation of the Holy Spirit and Jesus was revealed by Him to our hearts, we have this hope. Our hope is not on this earth. It is not on this life that is fleeting life our hope is on the one who has embraced us tonight which is the Holy Spirit our hope is in eternity with God and I want to say to the brethren that our objective tonight is that we leave this place strengthened and prepared for eternity and you who visit us you were here in the Sunday night a day in which we love, we love to speak about Jesus because you can live this place with your life spiritually, with a definition beside Jesus, with our eternal, eternal security guaranteed from this day forward. Because you can receive Jesus as your Savior in the same way we received once. So let's continue. It's a song. It's a glorious song that the prophet made to show us you know, what prophetic moment we are living. So he says the following. I heard, I heard your speech, O Lord. Today, my brethren, the world is, world is listening to many voices. It's the voice of technology. It's the voice of the social movements, the voice of the religions, that each one rises up to defend their own banner. But here there's a people the zeals to hear the declarations of God, the revealed word. And God proclaims from Deuteronomy, from the Pentateuch, the first five books of the law, He says, hear and I will say. God wants us to hear His voice, to listen to His voice. God wants us to be paying attention to the prophetic words that He's saying. And God speaks through His church. God speaks through His church. God speaks through the prophetic signs. The Bible says, I am at the door and I knock. The knocking at the door is a sign. The, the prophetic signs that are coming, they are showing the, the floods, the uh, fires we have seen in California, uh, the forest fires. Always on some of these, these fires, they devastate long, uh, large areas and uh, amazing, incredible areas. In Brazil, also, the forest fires, 
the pollution of the water, the pollution of the air. Man is not able to control technology. The powers, the superpowers, a few weeks ago, there was a conflict between the, uh, the current government and North Korea, and the insecurity, and the world is in this insecurity. My brethren, this is all prophetic. We are not prophets of chaos. We cannot be causing fear on the people. But we cannot stop talking about what is the truth, what we are living in our daily lives. The world is walking towards uh, a chaos, but we are embraced, being embraced by the Lord. We are being cared by the Lord. And this care, my brethren, is something that brings security to us. So we can ask, what is the hope of the world? What is the hope of the world? The world is aging. I was speaking with Pastor Ronildo this afternoon. Here, the brethren see that they are enlarging the, the I-95, but the traffic continues the same. Uh, you can imagine in a few years we're going to have to use drive uh, ride on drones. It's going to be this confusion that you see in movies. Drone is going on the top and at the bottom. I don't know what, if it, this is going to happen. I'm not going to live to see this. Uh, maybe the children are going to see that something aerial. Everybody with their flying cars. Or maybe we're going to have to make a viaduct from here to Miami. <laughs> The world walking is walking towards a chaos. But it's not a problem. Problem of technology will be solved. But how about this insecurity in, in man's heart and their daily walk and the and tomorrow and this survival and the enemies and the friends and it all generates an insecurity for man without God. You may even have entered here with this insecurity. But the good news for you, my my beloved that don't have Jesus as your Savior, is that Jesus is our true friend. Here, I heard hear our voice and I was afraid. When we hear the revelations and the prophets, we are afraid. We also are afraid. We are humans. The evil comes to everyone. The trial comes to everyone. <coughs> what is the great difference between the one who has Jesus and the one who doesn't have Jesus? The world doesn't know where to go. The person that doesn't have Jesus doesn't know where to go. But we have the refuge and the fortress that we just sang about. God is our refuge and fortress, a very present help in the moment anguish. We have infirmities. We run to the Lord. We have family trials and we run to the Lord. We have our own thoughts and we run to the Lord. And He comes and embraces us. What a glorious thing. Because He loves us. He says, I will not leave you orphan. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is with us. And Jesus said, I will be with you a few days. Right? No, every day until the finish of the centuries. My brethren, what is the hope of the world? The world has no hope. What is the hope of the church? Hey, the hope of the the church is different. We have the Lord. And my wrath. What is this word in wrath? The original says uh, agitation, uh, anger, tumult, and, and in this um, unrest that the world is living is a judgment of God. We remember, my brethren, of, about the wrath of God in a few events. Do you remember? Let us remember, Noah, wasn't it uh, a wrath of God that was manifested upon the entire humanity and the deluge came? Why? Because the sin of man went to the limit of God. Isn't God love? Yes, God is love. But God is also justice. The soul that sinned, that one will die. The wage of sin is death. God is love, but if you don't accept Jesus, you are condemned eternally without God. And that's why the pastors, they come up to this pulpit, the, the ushers and deacons, and then preach the word to you. 
so that you can have the same experience that once we had. We accepted Jesus to change eternity from an eternity without God to an eternity with God. Hallelujah. And you have this opportunity tonight. We can not preserve the sword of the blood. We cannot uh, prevent from saying the truth. You cannot deceive yourself saying, oh, what a wonderful service, what a wonderful, wonder, how many wonderful songs. But if you don't make a, a definition, you remain under the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is judgment. There is no resource. God sent a judgment upon the world that was uh, uncovered back then. In the whole world, there is proof, scientific proof, of a deluge in the entire world. And you know how many were left? Only eight people. Eight people. The family of Noah, the whole family of Noah, and they began once again, and God exercised His judgment. There was also another judgment, Sodom and Gomorrah. The sin of Sodom and Gomorrah went up to heaven. Abraham interceded, 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 and came to the tenth, right? There was no ten people that would be saved. How many were saved? Lot and two daughters. Not even his wife was escaped. What is the name of Lot's wife? Statue of Salt. <laughs> That's true. I think I've uh, I've already said this, right? This woman's not an easy woman. I'm sorry for her. She suffered a lot. But she was left behind. She's there. Sometimes people go there. You see the, the formation of salt and, and the Dead Sea where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be. They're called wife a lot. God exercised his judgment because men. God has a limit. God was going to destroy Jericho. And he said, I'm going to destroy only Will, who only the ones who will escape are the ones who hear the voice of God. My brother, only one family was saved. Do you remember the family of Rahab? She was probably one of the most, uh, the least uh, of the people that, that would be uh, worthy of being saved because she, but she accepted the voice of God and she was saved. And by Pastor, I have many sins, I have many problems in my home. And that's true. The Lord has shown that there are in two spiritual gifts of people with problems in their homes. But you are not, not privileged because of this. Because the enemy has attacked the families. The enemy is trying to destroy our families with uh, bad habits, with the media entering into the homes and pouring out uh, garbage inside of the house. In youth and adolescence, opening up their minds to to this garbage. But thank God we have a people that know how to future and to discern and to choose the Lord instead of the garbage of the world. But the homes that are harboring this, they are receiving everything. But the world has changed, so you can live however you want. That's what is going on. Families are being destroyed, the child and to, to uh, to the house, the father doesn't know if he has drugs or not, and that's how it's been. But our people has limits. Why? Because who established this limit, my brethren, is the Holy Spirit of God that lives in our heart. And we don't let go of this. We glorify the Lord. Lord, put limits around our children. Put, Lord, surround them. Put fence. Fences, fences around them. Don't allow the world to enter to their minds and destroy their neurons with drugs and other things. My brethren, we are uh, del delivering this message because the wrath of God is a reality. In wrath, what kind of wrath is this? Is the limit of sin that has risen to the heart of uh, God? You go to some places and, and cities here in this day to day. And I think that if uh, an inhabitant of Sodoma today, he would feel he would feel ashamed in some places. He would say, "I'm not even a sinner compared to the sin that has been in this world." The wrath of God is about to be manifested. And ask the brethren, do you know what is the judgment that is being established for the world? He's not going to destroy the world. No, 
God will remove this from this world those who are faithful, those who have heard the voice of God, those who have heard the declaration, the revealed word of God, those who are here tonight, Sunday night, saying, Lord, I want to hear your revelation. I want to make a definition on your side. I want to be prepared for this judgment. You know, my brethren, why? Because on the wrath of God, he remembers of his mercy. He saved the family of Noah. He saved Lot and his two daughters. He saved Rahab and, and, and her family. And he's going to deliver you from this judgment. He's going to deliver us, uh, the faithful church, from this judgment. And for those who are Christians, firm in the presence of the Lord, the prophet makes a plea. He says, Lord, revive your work in my heart. Revive your work, Lord. So, my brethren, this word in original means keeps alive, sustain my life. And that's what we are doing here tonight. And what the brethren came to do here in the morning and what we went to do in Hallandale, the church is doing, Lord, we want a serious commitment in wrath in the time of judgment. Lord, have mercy. Remember your mercy. You know what is mercy? There is a difference between grace and mercy. The grace is what we don't deserve and God gives us. God gave us salvation for free. He baptized us with the Holy Spirit for free and He gave us spiritual gifts freely and we don't deserve it. But you know what is the mercy? The mercy is what we deserve. The wage of sin, the judgment where God can come upon me. But God exercises His mercy upon me, upon you, and say, no, I have compassion. It is an unconditional love. That, uh, it's a love that goes over any understanding. And so I will exercise the mercy of God upon my people because Jesus died for us. So the wage of sin is death, but the a free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So today, my beloved, you can receive Jesus as your Savior. And you can plead like the way we're pleading. Lord, maintain a life this flame. Revive your work of the Holy Spirit. This work that you're doing throughout centuries. Keep a life in my heart. Would you like tonight to make a decision to this, on the side of Jesus? Accept Jesus as your Savior and say, Lord, I want to have a, a serious commitment. I have been coming to the church, but from this day forward, I want something serious. I want to put my family on your prayer before you, Lord. The Lord has shown here a family almost completely destroyed, but this sister is here tonight, and she's to the point of giving up. And she's telling herself, I want to give up. But the Lord was the one who brought you here. And the Lord is saying, do not give up. Do not give up. Fight. Fight to the end for you, for your family. Do not give up. The Lord is going to bless you tonight. It's a promise here. The Lord is going to renew his, your covenant with your husband, with your house. He's going to strengthen your life. Fight for them. That's the word of the Lord. I remember David. When David came to a city of Sida Ziklag, the city was taken over. His family was taken away captive, and he cried a lot. It was very sad, but he went to the feet of the Lord and called the priest and asked advice and consulted the Lord. The Lord gave a revelation, go and fight for them. And he went and fought, and the Lord said, you're going to bring everything back. Maybe that's what you need to do. Fight for your children, for your marriage, for your husband, for your wife. wife fight for them, my brethren. That's the word of the Lord, which is here in a spiritual gift. Fight for them to this sister and to each one of us here. We need to fight for our families. David went and rescued everyone and brought everyone alive with health and was victorious. And you leave this place victorious as well. And, vit and it will be in, in the name of Jesus. And there is also a man that has been fighting for his own project and has only has had disappointment with men, with human beings. And the Bible says, uh, curses a man who trusts men, but blesses the man who trusts in the Lord. So if you trust in the Lord or your projects, your plans, God's going to guide you. Everything that 
the proper time. God is going to lay his hand upon you and is going to give the resource to this man. He's going to de dedicate a quantity to the revelation of God. What a blessing for us who are saved, Christians. Revive your work, Lord. Speak, speak with me. Say with, uh, with me. Revive your work, Lord. Once again, revive your work, Lord. For you who are not servant of the Lord, accept Jesus as your Savior. Let us stand up. Hallelujah, God.
Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Lord God, we praise your name, Lord. Because we know that your presence is real in our midst. We praise the Lord for the visitation of the Spirit. For the joy that takes over our heart. Because we know that we will take care of each one of us. The week that begins. We need delivered. We ask delivered, Lord, in the ministration of, of the Lord in our behalf, so that angels may bring answers to our prayers, and that we may, with the eyes of faith, see your glory, receive our adoration and your pr our praise. Is a prayer we say in the name of Jesus, Amen. And in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us, all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. If someone desires a prayer, if one of the gifts spoke to you, the Word, If you felt the touch of the Holy Spirit, we are here at your disposal to give assistance. Uh, the pastors and deacons, we thank you for your visit. And we um, desire the peace of the Lord to everyone.